Hello and welcome to Theatre Reviews with Paul Seven. Normally on this channel I uh, review theatre shows, but in this video I'm looking ahead to what's coming up in London theatres in 2023 and selecting the seven shows I'm most looking forward to. Let's start with musicals. Oklahoma, the uh, Young Vic's revisionist version of the Rodgers and Hammerstein classic, gets a West End run. Now, I reviewed this when I saw it at the Young Vic, and while there's a lot to enjoy in it, not least the bluegrass arrangements of the songs, Curly's confidence is now seen as arrogance, and Judd is uh, more of a sensitive outsider than a real villain. Well, it may all be there and usually ignored in the script, but it makes for a far less uplifting experience than you might uh, hope for in a Rodgers and Hammerstein musical. Also getting a London run is Standing at the Sky's Edge, Richard Hawley and Chris Bush's history of a housing estate in Sheffield, uh, which runs from hope at the new estate to dilapidation and uh, then to gentrification. And that's happened to a lot of the UK's uh, housing estates. The National Theatre, no less, have decided that this new musical deserves a wider audience. Operation Mincemeat... Uh, also the subject of a recent film, uh, travels from the fringe to the West End. It's a spoof musical with pastiches of many different styles, which uh, provide the vehicle for a very funny story of a plot to deceive Hitler uh, during World War II. That'll be appearing at the Fortune Theatre, and if you're not familiar with that venue, well, that may be because it's been the home to the woman in black for the last 33 years. And, you know, while it might not last that long, I have a feeling Operation Mincemeat could have the big word of mouth and small running cost that will make it a long-running feature of the West End. The Old Vic presents a new musical called Sylvia, starring Beverly Knight as Sylvia Pankhurst. Now, she was a militant socialist and daughter of Emmeline Pankhurst. The use of dance, hip-hop, funk and soul to tell a story could set just the right tone for this tale of a revolutionary and uh, feminist. Here's a trailer from the Old Vic featuring one of the songs. Stand up now, we won't give up. We're gonna stand up now, together. A quick mention also for the Great British Bake Off musical, which is getting a West End run after receiving a handshake from the people who saw it in Cheltenham. And there's also a couple of musicals returning. Tim Minchin's well-received Groundhog Day is back at the Old Vic, and Bonnie and Clyde, which garnered mixed reviews. Uh, the Broadway musical of Mrs Doubtfire is also on its way to London. Audience seem to have enjoyed it uh, when it was uh, previewing in Manchester, but my feeling is the same as Stephen Sondheim once said about a different musical. A perfectly respectable show based on a perfectly respectable source that has no reason for being. And thank you, Adam Feldman of Time Out New York, for reminding us of that quote. So to the two musicals I'm going to recommend. And they're both revivals. First is Crazy For You. It's already wild audiences at Chichester Festival Theatre, and I was one of them. And now it's getting a run in the West End. I haven't the words to convey to you how exciting and uplifting this production is. It's helped enormously by the way it incorporates some of the very best songs by the Gershwin Brothers. Uh, it's helped even more by choreographer and uh, director Susan Stroman's dance uh, sequences. And most of all, it's lifted to incredible heights by the extraordinary dancing of Charlie Stamp, who leaps and turns in ways that you thought had died with Gene Kelly. Uh, this is Chichester Festival Theatre's original trailer.
Number two in my list of must-sees is Frank Lesser's Guys and Dolls. For many, including myself, the greatest musical ever written. I've always thought the movie doesn't do it justice, uh, thanks perhaps to miscasting of Marlon Brando, but I've every hope that this immersive production at the bridge will do it justice. It's a tale of petty criminals and the power of love, um, and it's been given a six-month run, so the theatre will no doubt be hoping that luck will be their lady. And the audience will be all around the show, and some will be in the middle of it. I guess they'll be told to sit down if they rock the boat. Well, if this isn't the show of the year, take a lawyer and sue me. OK, enough of that. Let's look at some plays. Every year there are revivals of well-known plays, and this year they include Michael Frayn's Noises Off, uh, what you might call the original play that goes wrong, and possibly the finest comedy written, certainly in my lifetime. And then there's Brian Friel's almost legendary Dancing at Lunasa. The winner of Olivier and Tony Awards for Best Play, it tells of change threatening the stable but unfulfilled lives of five sisters. Also revived is Martin McDonagh's The Pillar Man. Now, you'll know Martin McDonagh for his films in Bruges, Three Billboards, and his latest, The Banshees of Inner Sharon, which is lined up to win a few Oscars. And, of course, his blistering stage plays like The Cripple of Inish Ma and The Lieutenant of Inish Moor and Hangman. The Pillar Man was first uh, produced at the National Theatre in 2003 and then starred David Tennant and Jim Broadbent, no less, in the two main roles of an author of gruesome short stories, suspected of murder, and his heartless uh, interrogator. Uh, despite winning an Olivier Award for Best New Play and being produced all over the world, including Broadway, where the two main parts were taken by Billy Crudup and Jeff Goldblum, it has never had a West End run. Well, now it will. And with the interesting casting of Lily Allen, highly praised for her debut in uh, 222, as the author, and Steve Pemberton from Inside Number 9 as the interrogator. Uh, lurking beneath the surface is a question of just how far you can go with art. Um, and as with all new productions, there's a bit of the unknown, but I'm nominating the Pillarman as one not to miss in 2023. Early on in the year, I'm looking forward to two plays which are over 2,000 years old, so you could say they've stood the test of time. Medea is Euripides' ancient Greek play about a wronged wife who seeks bloody revenge. Sophie Yokonedo is the eponymous lead, and she's supported by Ben Daniels as her husband and the king and other characters. It's at Soho Place, so I was already excited before I knew that it was being directed by one of our finest directors, Dominic Cook. I've already got my tickets. Now, the Roman playwright Seneca created his own version of Medea based on Euripides' original, and he did the same thing with Hydra. And this time it's the Seneca version that gets a revival at the National Theatre. Writer-director Simon Stone has reimagined this story about a woman who falls in love with her stepson. And the reason I'm especially excited is that Simon Stone was responsible for the reimagining of Lorca's Yerma in a Young Vic production that starred Billy Piper and remains one of my outstanding theatre experiences. With Janet McTeer in the role, title role, it has to be one of my unmissable shows of 2023. Here's the National Theatre's trailer. So that's four down, three to go in my seven unmissable shows of 2023. So what else can we look forward to? Before January is out, Lemons, 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 Lemons will have opened. Sam Steiner's play was a hit on the Edinburgh Fringe, and now it's getting a run at the Harold Pinter Theatre. Any new play, uh, in this case a speculative fiction about a couple limited to the number of words they can use each day, is a hard sell which may be why there are two big guns in the cast, Jenna Coleman and Aidan Turner. 
Mr Turn is well known for Poldark, but he was also the star of The Lieutenant of Inish Moor in 2018, which remains one of my favourite nights at a theatre. So, almost certainly one to try. Other new plays opening in London this year include The Motive and the Cue by Jack Thorne, best known in the world of theatre for his script for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and the old Vic's now annual A Christmas Carol. He's written a play about a play for the National Theatre. The Motive and the Cue explores the fascinating story of the time John Gilgood directed Richard Burton in Hamlet. In an experimental production, by the way. We can expect this play to explore the clash of generations and the effect of celebrity on art, not to mention some explosive bust-ups in the rehearsal room. Now, when I tell you that Johnny Flynn is playing Burton and Mark Gatiss is Gilgood, with a bonus of Tuppence Middleton as Elizabeth Taylor, I think you can see why I'm nominating it as one of the unmissable theatrical events of 2023. A new production from Complicity is always an event. This year, artistic director Simon McBurney has conceived and is directing a stage version of Drive the, Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead, a dystopian work about environmental catastrophe. It'll undoubtedly be a piece of multimedia, disruptive theatre, and you can see it at various UK and European venues, including the Barbican in London. Tom Hollander in Patriots transfers from the Almeida to the West End and returning to the West End is the National Theatre production of the Lehman Trilogy. Ivo van Hover first came to my notice with his devastating production of View from the Bridge at the Young Vic, one of the greatest productions I've seen. But since then I've tended to feel he's too much in love with the use of video to the detriment of live theatre. But his production of A Little Life when it was seen in Dutch at the Edinburgh Fringe sparked excellent reviews. It's now receiving an English language premiere in London with James Norton leading the cast as a man abused as a child whom we see subjected to relentless suffering as an adult. This is Eva van Hover talking about the original Dutch production. Niets is jouw schuld. Zullen we dat onthouden? Mama. Waarom heb je me dit aangedaan? Little Life is actually a sad story and a brutal story, but also an emotionally moving story. And it's about Jude, that's the main character, who turns out to be abused since he was seven until he's 15. And I will die. Why is my laugh a bit here gebleven? It shows the consequences that abuse has on his life. But it's not only a story about the abuse, because Jude has three great friends. You could say the best friends in the world. They really care for him, even when sometimes it's very hard to deal with him because he is full of frustration. He is fighting his demons day and, day and night, you could say. But they try to help him, they never give up. So it's also a beautiful portrait of real deep friendship. A Little Life is likely to be talked about more than anything else on this year's London stage, and for that reason alone, I regard it as unmissable. However, it's certainly not for the squeamish. Let me read you the trigger warnings. This production includes strong language, nudity, sexual violence, physical and emotional abuse, self-harm and suicide. It's also likely to be around four hours long, and in the round, so there'll be no escaping its visceral power. If you have the stomach... You can see it at the Harold Pinter Theatre. Let's end on a lighter note. I laughed more at one production last year than at any other, and that was The Unfriend at Chichester Festival Theatre, and it's now getting a well-deserved West End transfer. It tells of a British couple who meet an American woman on a cruise and invite her to stay with them, never imagining she actually would. But she does. And they then discover that she may be a murderer. But their innate British politeness and unwillingness to cause offence means they're unable to put her off or get rid of this brash American. It's written by Stephen Moffat of Doctor Who and Sherlock fame. It's directed by Mark Gatiss. And it stars Rhys Shearsmith, Amanda Abington and the great Francis Barber. And that's the final one of my seven unmissable theatre shows of 2023.
I hope you enjoyed this video, at least found it useful, and if you did, please like and comment. If you share my enthusiasm for theatre, you can be the first to see all my reviews and other videos by subscribing. You can also read my reviews at theatre.reviews. And you can follow me on Mastodon and Twitter, where I summarise the main reviews of the big shows, and on Instagram and Facebook, where I post photos of the theatres and shows I visit. Thank you for watching.